Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little carbine that you guys see in front of you right now. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. This is one of their latest versions. I actually have one of their earliest versions of this gun and it's one of the first reviews that's actually was on this channel rather um, but that gun was very different in terms of accessories in this one so we're redoing it now if you want to go watch that video just for entertainment to see how bad I was at running a YouTube channel <laughs> feel free to do so uh, but we're going to go over again this is a 2020 version this is the Magpul SL version now they also make a version with the same handguard that comes with a red and green dot that's a little bit cheaper and they have other versions as well state compliant etc um, but we're kind of going to use this as again the 2020 version and all other models will sort of roll from there so Again, it is a AR-15 style rifle, but chambered in 22 long rifle. Now the beauty of this versus most other competitive offerings out there is that the controls are just like an AR-15. There's literally no difference in terms of how you operate the rifle and manual of arms, which makes it an excellent training rifle. Uh, if you wanna save some money on ammo or introduce new shooters to the AR-15 platform, those sorts of things, it's excellent. There's no compromise there in terms of the controls of the rifle, which I really like. But uh, before we get into the details of it, let's go ahead and head back out to the range and see what kind of groups we can get out of it and then come back and walk through the rifle piece by piece. So there I was editing this video and I realized that the file where I was actually shooting the accuracy portion of this video was a corrupt file. So I do not have it. You guys can probably see the bullet impacts here on your screen. So sorry for that. Uh, additionally, the microphone that I was using to discuss the groups that you guys are about to see here in just a second uh, was broken and is now in the trash, but I didn't know it at the time, so I apologize for the audio. So that's the second thing. The third thing, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video because of course this video will be instantly demonetized even before it goes up on YouTube and that is Acre Gold. So what Acre Gold is, it's a little bit different than some of the other uh, gold programs out there. Basically, you pay what is kind of like a subscription fee, but the money that you put in goes towards whatever amount of gold you want. And as soon as it hits the amount, so let's say it's, I don't know, 10 ounces, just hypothetically. As soon as whatever you put in gets to that amount, that piece of gold, amount of gold gets sent out to your door. So that way you can just put a little bit aside every month and then every now and then an actual chunk of gold will show up at your door. So that is Acre Gold. Thank you. Thank you rather to them for sponsoring the video. Now let's check out those groups. Prior to running this accuracy test that you guys just saw here, the overwhelming majority of the ammo we put through it has been the Federal Syntex stuff. So it's got the polymer jacket on there. And uh, that stuff was shooting about three inches at 50 yards, at least when I zeroed it in. Uh, so again, pleasant surprise to see these groups here uh, with the match stuff here from Federal. Center to center, we are right at one inch. So that's a two MOA group where we're shooting at 50 yards can't be mad about that. Then we came over here. I believe this is the Aguila. Don't quote me on that. I might mix these two up. And we're right at an inch and a quarter center to center on that one. Then we came over here and uh, that I believe was a segmented all point. I'm getting so confused. Uh, you guys know if I'm wrong, I will put it up there. We're right at 1.75 inches that one and then we were down here with the gem tech match stuff so two match loads and they performed no doubt about it um my earlier generation smith and wesson m&p sport definitely wasn't this accurate so either it's these loads or they've simply uh done some changes to the gun but that one there sub moa we're right about seven eighths of an inch with the uh, gem tech stuff with the accuracy out of the way, let's get into the details of it. So out here on the end of the muzzle, it does ship with an A1 flash hider. I've read a lot of reports online of like gun writers and stuff saying it ships with an A2. It doesn't. I have an A2 on there now. That's because I took the A1 off to add a suppressor and then couldn't find it, etc. But it comes with an A1, so it has the open ports there on the bottom. Obviously a very good uh, flash reduction system. And it's not like 22 is going to have a lot of flash anyway coming out of a 16 inch barrel, but it does reduce it a good bit, which is nice. And one thing that's also nice is that it has standard half by 28 threads under there. So any of your 22 cal suppressors that are out there on the market or other suppressors that aren't 22, but you can 
throw a half by 28 adapter on will work on this little carbine here, which is great. Uh, if you guys watched any of my Bowers Group 22 suppressors, this thing was uh, featured heavily in those reviews. It's just a great rifle, suppressed or unsuppressed. Continuing on back, the barrel itself does have Smith & Wesson's Armor Knight finish on there. It's essentially a salt bath nitriding process. So you guys may be familiar with melanite, QPQ'd, nitrided, etc. It's a very similar process where it's going to add some uh, corrosion resistance on there as well as surface hardness. Uh, really, you're probably going to have a really hard time uh, shooting this barrel out ever, even with the cost of 22 being relatively inexpensive. Uh, continuing on back, we do have this free-floated M-Lock hand guard there. We have 1913 rails there on top, and we have M-Lock positions at the 3, 6, 9 o'clock position, as well as the intermediate positions. So those are M-Lock slots at the intermediates, which is actually pretty nice. There's a lot of high-end uh, real AR-15 handguards that don't have that. Um, this particular version comes with the Magpul MBUS 2 sights. Uh, they're fantastic. I actually have a full review of them if you guys are interested in it. And what's cool about the M-Lock sections here is that any of your modern accessories can fit on there. If you want to add like a vertical floor grip, a uh, light like we have here, um, all of them will fit just fine. At least in my experience, I haven't found anything that didn't fit fine. And the 1913 rail also, again, same thing. If you want to add any accessories, lights, lasers, etc., on there, you can do so. And then moving on back, we have the upper and lower receiver. There's a lot going on there. So let's switch the camera and kind of focus in. I'm not exactly sure what I said during the accuracy portion. You guys have just seen it. That was shot probably about two months ago as I'm recording this right now. So uh, I believe we mentioned the scope, but this is the Primary Arms 1 to 6 ACSS scope. It's got the 22 long rifle, uh, auto ranging BDC reticle, which is really cool. Uh, another fun fact for you guys is that if you zero at 25 with most nine millimeter loads, uh, it's gonna be pretty close out to 200, which is also pretty cool considering all the little PCCs that are out there these days. Uh, the, pips, the rifle, I should say, comes with 25 Brown magazine standard, unless you guys live in a band state. What's nice about these mags is that they have this little tab ball over here. So that way folks who are weak or just maybe inexperienced at loading firearms can kind of pull it down and take the tension off. And a lot of people do like that back here at the bot at the back rather. Uh, this little piece right here is actually what functions to hold your bolt hole open. So like I said in the intro, it functions just like an AR-15 in every way, including the bolt hole open, uh, which certainly is nice. So we'll kind of show you that here on this side of the gun our safety there is a left side only and just like a ar-15 if i was to let's say uh, fire it at this point i can't put it back on safe until you run the action again in terms of function it is just like an ar-15 bolt lock is also the same as well as a bolt release um, and then over here on the right side our magazine release exactly the same in terms of function as you would have on your AR-15. Uh, the trigger on this one I don't want to say you can put any aftermarket trigger in there because I'm sure there's some that it's not compatible with however the overwhelming majority of them it will be compatible with. We also have our shell deflector here those of you guys that are left-handed, I don't have to worry about the shells coming back and hitting you in the face. It's going to deflect them forward, uh, which certainly is nice as well. It takes apart or disassembles rather in terms of the upper and lower receiver, just like your standard AR-15. So you're going to pull your pins out and then break them apart. Now our bolt, <laughs> our bolt and charging handle are proprietary. You can't switch them out with like an aftermarket charging handle with the exception of ones that are made for it. And there are at this point, charging handles that are made specifically for these little carbines here, which is nice. Uh, so we'll set that off to the side and uh, take a look here at our bolt. Um, pretty standard for, in terms of how it functions for a lot of AR-15, uh, rather 22 carbines. So basically it just rides on these rails here and has this spring on there. So there's actually no like buffer and spring like you would have on a typical AR-15. Uh, just this little bit of mass going back and forth. And one thing I want to address here, because I'm sure there's already people typing it down in the comments section, is that there's some competition, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, that, that banned these for competition use because there were some guns that were firing out of battery. Um, that was a small lot that went out to the West and they put out a recall notice. There's actually a video uh, up on their YouTube channel where you can check it out. And if you're curious as to whether or not you had one of those, I believe they'll actually send you out a gauge that you can use to see. But essentially some of the bolts didn't have the actual rim cut deep enough there. And that's why it was having the issue. 
again, it's not a huge issue, but I know if I didn't mention it, all the guys would be down in the comments section talking about it. So <laughs> I had to bring it up there. Uh, so like we were saying earlier, um, that piece that rides up in the back of the magazine here is what comes up in there. If I could actually get it in and actually actuates your bolt uh, hold open mechanism there. So you guys can see right there how it goes up and in there. Again, like I said, most of your triggers aftermarket will work. You'll see there, we do not have a buffer tube. It's just a piece of plastic, um, kind of cool in that regard. And then we have our MOE SL grip on here and the trigger guard is integrated. The overwhelming majority of this receiver um, is polymered. There are some metal reinforcements that key parts uh, just to you know make sure that you're not gonna have any sort of failures like that or anything like that. Rather, we do have a beveled magazine well, which I like, definitely a fan of that. The stock on this one is the Magpul SL stock. It's fantastic stock. I actually have a full review of it. It's excellent. Uh, we have our quick detach sling swivel points here. And then we have our two traditional standard uh, sling attachment methods as well to adjust it. It's a six position stock. So you just pull up and pull out. It does lock into any of the six positions and it is snug on there. But you can see there it locks in nice and tight. If you have children or um, smaller folks that want to you know, learn on it, you can get it nice and short for them for their uh, smaller length of pull, which certainly is nice. And like I said, there's other models that'll have the standard, uh, just kind of like a mill spec stock on there. If that's the case, um, again, you can drop any of your mill spec dimension stocks on there, any aftermarket ones that I'm aware of. I've tried numerous ones on there. They've all fit it just fine. So uh, in terms of parts interchangeability, that's certainly a good feature. At this point, I think we covered most of the important points on the rifle with the exception of two things. That's gonna be price and reliability. Now, one thing I'll tell you is if you look around on the internet, one thing you'll find is people saying these are extremely reliable rifles. That is absolutely true in my experience. Like I said, I have an early one that I don't think ever had a malfunction and that thing has a ton of rounds through it. It's what I taught my wife to shoot the AR-15 on. So she just shot that thing a ton. Um, so it never had a malfunction. And then with this one, um, I requested ammo from Federal and Aguila and Gemtech and uh, I believe Browning as well. And they all sent some stuff out. And there's actually a list of ammo that Smith & Wesson says will function in this rifle in their manual. If I can find it, I'll, I'll run it here on your screen. Uh, and with 22, there's so much variable, some variances rather, in ammunition in terms of charge, um, the bullet weight, et cetera, that sometimes uh, any rifle can be picky. However, most 22 rifles, semi-automatic wise, are very picky. This one, again, not so much in my experience. And the only load out of all the ones here that you guys see on the table uh, that we had a single issue with was, let me see if I can find it. it this is it. So it was the Aguila uh, Sniper Subsonic 60 grain. Uh, for some reason, it didn't want to feed them. Now, these bullets are extremely long on this um, cartridge. I would imagine that's why, however, um, the, like the CCI suppressor, the Gemtech suppressed stuff, um, our CCI clean, and then subsonic call points from Aguila, the 30 grain, which is a super hot load here from Aguila. It's called the super maximum. Um, those are wildly different loads in terms of recoil impulse and energy. And it fed every single one of them flawlessly. This particular rifle right now has about 1500 rounds through it. And like I said, with the exception of that one particular load, not a single malfunction of any kind. It locked the back, bolt back rather, on every mag. So, I mean, there's really not much more you can ask of a rifle than that, particularly when you consider the price point that these are coming in at. So uh, these right now, depending on the model, the ones I think the cheapest one right now is the one I'm filming the video anyway, I believe is the one that comes with the red and green dot from the factory, which is nice. So you get an optic right with it from the factory. That one right now, street price, you can find it around $350. Um, the MSRP, of course, is higher. And one thing I didn't mention that I probably should have is the weight on them. So this particular model right here, without the scope on there and without, of course, the light, comes in right at 4.7 pounds. The other ones with the optic obviously weigh a little bit more because they have an optic. Um, but in terms of ease of handling for smaller statured folks or weaker folks, excellent. I mean, they're absolutely just... There's not a lot of bad things I have to say about it, uh, really at all. They work, they work well, they're a ton of fun. Right now, as I'm filming this, uh, we are in the midst of the uh, coronavirus or the, the Wu-Tang flu or the Kung flu. And um, 
ammo's kind of going up in price right now. So uh, regardless, even when Centerfire 223 is at a lower price, historically speaking, 22 is always going to be cheaper and has less recoil, is less intimidating than new shooters, and it's just easier to train with. There's more places you can shoot 22 than where you can shoot 223. Um, so there's just a lot of advantages to it. Um, for a myriad of roles out there. You know, there's some 22 conversion kits, which I actually plan on reviewing uh, going forward rather, but some of those are close to the cost of a complete rifle here. Um, so, you know, sometimes it makes sense just to get the complete rifle in my opinion, but I suppose it really depends on your circumstances and what you want. So I think that's it. I think we covered everything we need to cover on the rifle. If you have any questions about it, by all means, post a comment down below in the comment section. But the best place to reach me if you actually have a question that you need answered is over at my Facebook page. I respond to everybody over there. Like I said, right now we're in the middle of kind of a pandemic going on and my inbox is super full, but just uh, give me a little time, a little patience. I will get back to everybody over there because I see the comments over there, whereas on YouTube or elsewhere that I post videos, I don't always see them. So there is that. That's pretty much it, guys. If you like this kind of video and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified when I put videos up. If you've done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, uh, make sure you sign up for my email list. You can do so over at my Facebook page under the sign-up tab, or you can do so at my website, mrgunsandgear.com, under the sign-up tab. I send out, at most, one email a week with uh, the videos that have been posted since the previous email went out and then any deals that we find along the way like if there's a sale on this particular rifle we'll throw it in there in the email so that way you guys can save a little bit of money as well so that's it guys thanks for watching look forward to seeing everybody in the next video